Welcome to Introduction to SQL for Excel Users, Part 19, More Case When. I am your instructor, Dave Langer. I've got the Excel workbook for Part 19 of the series loaded up, and what you can see here is a table of data. And for this video, we're going to use a hypothetical scenario where I am the sales manager for AdventureWorks, and I have a hypothesis, I have an idea that goes something along the lines of, if sales reps make a lot of sales in their first 90 days of employment, they tend to produce more sales throughout their lifetime of employment. And let's say I don't really know SQL as the sales manager, so I ask AdventureWorks IT to give me some data, and what they do is they provide me with a spreadsheet, which has, let's see how many rows of data are in here. Uh, we got 3,796 rows of data, and what you can see here are individual line items, sales rep and sales orders. I've also included in this data the hire date. So this allows me to calculate whether or not a particular order was made within the first 90 days. So this data right now, as it is, won't help me explore this hypothesis as the sale manager. So I need to enrich the data to make it work for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new column to this table called sale made first 90 days. And what I'm going to store in this column is a one or a zero if a sales order was actually made within the first 90 days of employment. So that's easy to do using some awesome Excel code. So I'm going to use the if function and what I'm going to check for is a date diff. And a date diff between the hire date, which is B2, and D2, which is the order date. And I want to do the difference in days, okay? And date diff will return me back how many days have elapsed between the hire date and the order date. And what I want to do is I want to check to see if this date difference is less than or equal to 89. And the reason for that is it's entirely possible that a really cool, killer, effective sales rep may made a sale on their very first day. And if they did, if they made a sale on the very first day of employment, the date diff would be zero. So that's why I'm going to use less than or equal to 89. And if it's less than or equal to 89, it's going to be a one. Otherwise, it's going to be a zero. Hit enter. Boom. And now I've got my first piece of data that I need to explore this hypothesis. Next up, I need another column that will make my life a little bit easier. And this will essentially indicate whether or not a particular sales amount was executed within the first 90 days of employment. So we'll call this sales amount first 90 days. Okay. Double click that so we can see it. Great. Now, once again, we're going to go ahead and use our mighty if function along with the mighty date diff function. And again, it's going to be B2, D2, and then days. And we're going to check to see if the, the difference in days is less than or equal to 89 again. And if it is, we're going to put E2, the sales amount, in there. Otherwise, we're going to put zero. So this essentially creates a column that says, did a particular sales amount occur in the first 90 days of employment? Hit enter. I've got my table now enriched with extra data. What I need to do to explore my hypothesis as the sales manager is now to pivot this data. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and insert a pivot table here. And I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger so that it's easier to see. And let's go ahead and drop the sales reps on the rows. See all the sales reps here. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the sum of the sales made in the first 90 days. Now this is the count of the individual sale, sales orders. And then the sales amounts in the first 90 days. And then lastly, we're going to do the lifetime sales amounts. And to make this easier to read, we're just going to go ahead and format these as currency columns. So really make the values pop here. Sweet. What we can do here is we can eyeball the data. We can eyeball the data. So we can take a look at some high sales figures here. Here's somebody that sold $10 million in their first uh, $10 million over their lifetime. Here's someone who sold $10 million over their lifetime. Here's someone who sold $9 million, $8 million, $7 million. Okay, that's pretty interesting because just eyeballing the data 
doesn't necessarily look like there's anything that's really differentiating these folks. So for example, let's take a look at this person here. They sold half a million in their first 90 days and they sold only four and a half million over the lifetime. Now this person sold 1.4 million and then sold eight and a half. So it looks like it's kind of a mixed bag here. It's kind of a mixed bag. Not looking good for the hypothesis. Not looking good for the hypothesis. Now, what we want to do is essentially simulate this analysis, but use SQL. Because what I said earlier was, hey, I'm the sales manager, and if I don't know SQL, I got to depend on IT to pull this data for me. But if I know SQL, I can do it all myself. So I've got SSMS open, and you can see here that I have a query that simulates the data that we saw in the very first Excel table before we enriched it with additional data. So I'm going to go ahead and run the query, and you can see that the data that comes back exactly mimics what we saw in Excel. One thing I do want to point out in this SQL code that we haven't seen before is the use of the concat function. Now, concat is a really useful function when you want to shape data in your select list. And in particular, what I'm doing here is I'm taking data from the DIM employee table, the last name in particular and the first name, and I'm concatenating them with a comma space to get a nice formatting of last name, comma, first name, which you can see down here in the result set. Another thing that I should mention is that I'm casting the order date column from the fact reseller sales table to be a date. And the reason for that is simple. The higher date column from the DIM employee table is a date type, whereas order date in fact reseller sales is a date time. And when we do date diff calculation in SQL, it's usually beneficial if all of the types match up. So for example, higher date doesn't have a time aspect, so it makes sense to actually just trun truncate to trim off the date time aspect of order date and just make it a date and then just compare those two things. So we can take that query and wrap it up as a CTE. We're going to wrap this query and give it a name. We're going to call it sales rep data. And now we can run this query here. And this will give us the data that we saw in the augmented, the enhanced table of data in Excel. You can see here, sales made in the first 90 days, sales amount made in the first 90 days. And you can see what we're doing here. We are using the mighty date diff function inside of SQL. We're saying, hey, SQL, take the date difference between the higher date and the order date, and tell me how many days have elapsed between the two. And we say, okay, great. Now, this is awesome because we can then throw this into a logical condition wrapped with a case when, and essentially mimic what we saw in Excel with the if statement. Case when the date diff between these two dates is less than or equal to 89, then give me a one, else give me a zero, and then call this column sale made first 90 days. Similarly, we can do another case when, and we're doing a date diff less than or equal to 89, and if it's true, we say put the sales amount, otherwise put 0, 0.0. This right here, Okay, I cannot stress this enough. This type of select list feature engineering, especially using the mighty case win and dates, is done all the time. So for example, in a previous job, I created some initial churn analysis models. We wanted to be able to see if we could predict accurately whether a customer was going to churn based on their behaviors. Do they do certain things that lead up to them churning, leaving the company then going to one of our competitors? In that particular scenario, you use date-based features all the time. How many times did they call support in the, last, in the previous 90 days? How many times did they do this in the previous 30 days? All that sort of thing. So this sort of logic is used all the time in feature engineering for all kinds of analyses. Marrying up case win with the date calculation logic is a beautiful, beautiful thing. This gives us the last part of the table that we saw in Excel before we pivoted, and we have our data. Now, to actually get what we saw in the pivot table, we would scroll down and get this query right here. So we have our 
CT, of course, which pulls our base data. We then do a group by on the sales reps, and we say, okay, take the case when that we saw earlier, right? Case when we saw earlier, spit out a one or spit out a zero, and then we then wrap that in a call to this aggregate sum function. Okay, now, now we're really cooking with gas, okay? Now we're really cooking with gas because now we're saying, look, you know what? Add up all of these ones and zeros and per sales rep, tell me how many individual sales orders did they make within the first 90 days of employment? Similarly, we wrap the next case when in a sum and that gives us the total amount of sales in the first 90 days. And then lastly, of course, we can sum up the sales amount to get the total lifetime sales. Now think about this for a second. Think about what we can do here. We can now use group buys with case wins and we can spit out conditionally any sort of value we would like and then we can aggregate them at whatever level we would like based on our group buy. This is super, super powerful stuff. So for example, you can use this in RFM analyses. You can use these for churn modeling. You can use these for conversion prediction models. You can use this for all kinds of things. The feature engineering potential of this is immense. Some examples of things that I've also used this before that you might not think of. For example, I have used SQL like this to create features from a transactional database from our, or from a data warehouse that I then feed into market basket analysis in R. For example, you could say true or false. Did a customer do this particular behavior in the first 30 minutes or the first hour or the first week or the first month? These types of features can then be fed into a market basket analysis. And then you can find interesting associations between certain types of behaviors and other things that are interesting to the business. For example, maybe paid conversion or certain types of product purchases or churning. Who knows? All I'm saying is that the combination of group buy and case win is super, super powerful. You use it all the time in analytics all over the place. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this query now that I've given you the hard sell. And you can see the data that we saw in Excel. Once again, we can then analyze this and we can say, well, you know, the hypothesis seems kind of shaky. Maybe there's a, an association between a large amount of sales in the first 90 days and total lifetime sales, but just eyeballing the data doesn't look very strong. Okay, there you have it. The combination of group buy and case win is awesome sauce. I'm hoping you're enjoying the series. I'm hoping you're finding it valuable. I'm hoping you're learning SQL skills and applying it in your daily work with your business data. If you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel. I will be producing more videos over time until the series is completed. Not quite sure how long that's going to take, but I will finish this series up. Okay, until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.